I'm Ash Minnick, and this is Club Auspex. This is the show where we talk with the players of New York by Night and look into the unseen. We have just seen episode seven of season two of New York by Night, and I've got two of the amazing players with me here today, Josephine McAdam and Michelle and Bradley. Hello. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. As always, we will start with the obvious. Joe, you're here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh my God. Yay. Hi. Hi. No. I'm here. Welcome back to the table. Thank you. It's so nice being back here. Yeah, we have obviously seen you in season one in the end caps, mm -hmm. um, which was awesome. But that was that was you know a scripted end cap versus today you actually got to play at the table. Yes, anything could happen. Yes, <laughs> as as an entirely different character, but a canon character, a pretty a pretty big one. Yeah. <laughs> so so what was that experience like coming to the table as a canon character versus uh, as Ava? Uh, terrifying. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. That's um, you know, well, I think it's just knowing that, yeah, this is an established character and sort of bringing her to life, especially because, you know, I've played the game that she's in and we don't have a voice for her yet. We don't have, so it's kind of like, I guess I'm going to decide this now, you know, and it was just, but it was a lot of fun. It was also a lot of fun because I know the power that she holds and yeah, that was exciting. Your yeah. voice was so good that you crafted, by the way. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know you didn't base it off anything. I thought there was. I thought there was some sort of sound bite, but I just. I was blown away. I was like, it's powerful. It's good. It's deep. <sighs> it's dark. It scared the hell out of me. <laughs> and it's very New York, which tracks. Okay. Yeah, we were we were watching it in the back, and as soon as you started talking, we we're like, oh, oh, <laughs> she's terrifying. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was great. And good. were you familiar with the character at all outside of the? Uh... Yeah, a little bit. I read a bit about it, and then. Um, I, Xander and I talk shop in the, in the back back green room over there, so he kind of filled me in a little more lore too. But uh, I knew, I know, I didn't think that our characters were going to meet the prince, though. I really thought we were so <laughs> low level, like that no one, like they didn't even care we existed. Yeah, so that had to be fun. Not only was it, you know, Josephine, yeah. but, but <laughs> she's the prince. Hi. <laughs> yeah, truly great reveal, and uh, always love playing with Josephine. And then, like, I also like that. Our characters in character were like, oh no, the prince, what do we do? We're all going to die. Like, this is it. <laughs> and then our reaction to you, I, I didn't know if you could tell, but like, we were like, in character, we're genuinely scared of you. So like, if you like, <laughs> give me your information, like, okay. <laughs> I, I know, you just told me everything. <laughs> we were like, racking our brains for more to tell you. <laughs> we just corrected her all the pressure, like truly. It was fun. It was yeah, was fun. anything held back? Um, I think there's things we may have forgot that I can't I can't quite <laughs> recall right now, like in the in the heat of the moment. Um, I don't. I'm certainly. I think the information we gave up was about, you know, the the conspiracy, right? Mm -hmm. But I didn't tell you like my backstory or anything, and um, that was. Yeah. <laughs> I, that would have been great if you just started going into your backstory. <laughs> yeah, I was born in the year 1980. <laughs> like, oh, stop! Oh, no. Stop! Oh, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> I do. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I think we were all just like, "There's a prince. Spill the beans. We're gonna die." Especially as fledgling, um, you know, vampires. I think you know we were all told at some point, hopefully, that uh, this is someone to be like feared, respected. They make all the rules, and you know, it, you cross them, you're out you're forever. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty good entrance, I guess. It's yeah. fun watching them squirm. I got to admit, <laughs> like, I was like, "Oh, this is why." This is, this is, oh man, I should never have power. <laughs> it's too fun. Um, and I mean, so going into it though, uh, you were saying it was, it was kind of a total surprise, right? Like you didn't expect to see the prince. Um, and for you, uh, what was your sort of expectation of the scene versus how they actually reacted? If you had to, if you had to grade the coterie, how did they do? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, they did pretty well, I think, because they just, immediately started something. There was no questioning. Well, no, yeah, they, they, they immediately went for it. I, uh, I, there, there could have been, you know, maybe a little more admiration and like, you know. <laughs> Some more groveling. Yeah, Just maybe a little, a little more groveling. It's, hard to, it's hard to bow down when you're inside a limo. It's, I would say the other problem. It's fair, <laughs> you <me>. know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I mean, they, they told me, I think, things that, Maybe I had already assumed, or maybe I already knew, you know, but like it was really a test of how much will they spill. Yeah. And I think my impression, at least, is that they said as much as they could possibly remember on the spot and were like clearly scared, you know. Yeah. She's not unintelligent. She knows that they're scared, you know. 
And, and then when Kalita got into that limo, what, I mean, what were you, Michelle LePlaire, thinking was gonna happen in this scene? Where you're like, oh, it's the prince. Um, uh, I feel like, so immediately I was like, okay, guys, we have a body. We got to take care of this, this, this man first. <laughs> the room, you know, so we did that. And then the whole time you're like, what's the whole, you're like starting to yell. It's like, why, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, God, I can't let out. Yeah, I, know. I think I like looked at a watch that didn't exist. And I was like, mm, that's fine. Incredible. Uh, it's kindred, you're on kindred time. Yeah, but um, time. <laughs> the moon, the moonlight is burning. Um, I think that, uh, you know, as a character going into the situation, knowing that it was something, you know, we have to be careful with the prince and everything. And that, that all played out exactly how, you know, Kiem thought it would go. But then I think that ending part where you asked us, like, what we all want, that was, like, <laughs> wild. Because everyone really had such good answers. Or, like, we're playing some long game. And Kiem is just like, uh, I don't want to be part of this. I think, but I'm, I think I'm stuck your shit. Like, it was <laughs> truly, I was, I don't know, I just want to, like, be, do stuff and you're like not not be part of the um camera i was like no no no, like for you but just like not oh man that was a bad answer oh well okay i panicked oh no the words play both sides happen i was like if what <laughs> <laughs> i did see that look across your face and i was like ah <laughs> michelle and cam need to uh, i think it ended well you know it was like oh she wants to be a spy and you're like yes yeah spy spy <laughs> yeah, it got molded into that you know with some help but with, from uh, the sheriff i think too look, yeah. is it there were a lot of wild answers, you know, yeah. the yeah. primogen, what have you. I think like, this was maybe a little bit more realistic. I, I'm looking small. I'm looking for the. I'm looking forward to like the next three months, not like <laughs> twenty thousand years from now. The rest of these ding dongs. I mean, <laughs> I know how long I'm gonna survive in this city. Um, Why? Josephine, you had mentioned, you know, how powerful this player or this character is. Obviously, um, as a player, like, is there part of you that's like, oh, I could just kill them all. I could just kill them all. Yeah, um. Every single moment, <laughs> every single moment was that thought. And me, Josephine, going, God, I hope they don't do something that makes me kill them right now. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, I hope, I hope they don't have to die. I hope, but they will if they need to, you know? And yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, I was scared for them inside, you know, me watching mm -hmm. this all happen. But then um, it was fun. I feel like I kept looking to Jason being like, is this gonna be the moment? Is this gonna, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> how far will I, will I uh, take it? And it was fun to also have Kadir there, of course, to, yeah. to yeah. make sure I didn't just murder everyone. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that a conversation you have with Jason in advance? Is like, am I allowed to kill them? What if they're real dumb? <laughs> you know, yeah, there was a slight, a sli <laughs> I was like, you know, how far, I mean, none of them would be foolish enough to use powers on me. That was what I was like, should they do something like that, you know, that's going to end very badly. Yeah. You know, these kinds of things. But they were very well behaved, to be honest. Yeah, I feel like, you know, when a level one character goes up against a level 999 character, you know a little better than to cast, like, you know, level one fire. I'm just <laughs> speaking in an analogy here, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're not, this is not, this is a boss battle we're never going to win. <laughs> you still apparently ask, you know, for to be in charge of everything, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was wild. I was like, okay, we get it. You want power? Jeez. <laughs> Turn it down to a five. You're going to ten over here, buddy. <laughs> but it was fun because, you know, it makes for entertaining answers when you're telling a king, like, or whatever, you know, that you want. You're you like a surf when you for want you. your own like, kingdom, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so where, where do you, I want to hear what both of y'all think this is going. I want to I know where your character thinks it, like, is going to happen with these folks. And where you, what do you as a player think? Like, what, where does Kiem hope this goes? And how does Michelle see it going? <laughs> it's two totally different things. So I think, oh man, that's gonna be so sad. Right? So I have so many sad feelings about my character. So Kiem thinks that if she just like sticks this through and she can find a way out of this somehow, mm -hmm. I think she's ultimately looking for how can I be myself? And we talked about this a little bit last time too, but like, what is that? What am I? Um, she thought she was someone who was shaped by, you know, her father and her human life. And now that she is a kindred, now she gets to pick everything she gets to do. But what happened is she just went, went right back into another cycle of being yeah. controlled. And so, you know, she's realizing that. And I think she's panicking. And I think um, every, time, every time there's a chance for violence, she gets a little more, like, wild. Because she is, it's her only release from like, this knowledge that she's, She's probably not, she's getting close to admitting that, like, she's stuck again. 
Um, Michelle's very sad for her. <laughs> I mean, I wrote a tragic character. Like, it's, you know, it's my bag. But, uh, <laughs> like, I love it, but I hate it. Love that. Um, but, you know, uh, coming up to the last episode, um, I think, Michelle, I think that uh, Kim is going to have to figure out she's gonna have to stop playing that middle ground she's gonna have to make a choice um yeah. soon i you know i don't know if that's gonna happen in, in the finale or if it's gonna happen when she meet maybe meets other other characters from other seasons <laughs> i want to say that excuse me <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah so i think uh but the more people she meets i think she's looking for a connection and i think yeah. um in the episode before this she did meet a couple of characters in uh simone simone's um club that she was sort of like connecting with and feeling like she belonged somewhere a little bit mm -hmm. um but all that was happening outside of her coterie like her coterie she doesn't feel that connection with them i don't think um maybe she did with braun for a little bit but it's starting to everything's kind of starting to unravel for yeah. her uh with with those the coterie connection she's just sort of playing along now and i don't know <laughs> i truly don't know where this is going to end up i'm a little scared <laughs> i'm like real stressed out about it <laughs> <laughs> and then josephine what does the prince think of this little baby coterie and what do you think of where they're going to take it? Uh, let's see. I think the prince found this, you know, uh, it was like a blip in her evening of, ah, uh, uh, you know, that was a laugh. Now let's get on with our <laughs> business. And, you know, it's business as usual in a city like New York and with the amount of kindred that are there of so many different factions, I think that she must be somewhat used to it at this point. And, and the prince, she seems to be someone that does always roll with whatever is thrown at her. She's always on to the next step and on to how we're going to respond to this. Now, what she will do, I'm sure I could never um, <clears throat> truly reveal. And what I, Josephine, <laughs> think is coming next is, I assume and hope lots of death. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like there is death in this. In this You're future. so happy about that. Oh, it's so fun, though. That's true. That's true. Can't have a game of the undead without people being dead. Exactly. <laughs> I guess. Exactly. That's what we all hope for. It's just lots of death. Everyone's That's... gambling with immortality. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have one final question for y'all, just as as preparation, because this this happened a lot with uh, with Eva, and you also pull uh, your it's your wardrobe, right? You you <laughs> put a lot of your character into your wardrobe, and there's there's a story happening there as well. I, I want to hear about it. Tell um, me about it. Tell me about it. Yeah, so uh, mad inspo from Eva, obviously. Like, I mean, the hair, it, this is sort of an accident, to be honest. It's not supposed to be look like this. <laughs> anyway, long well, story. The clothing, I on purpose picked um, white and gold. Um, there, there's a lot of imagery I had when creating Kim about her, be her believing that she has been saved and that she went into this, uh, this going into the Camarilla thinking she was like an angel of like, I, I was defending. I'm 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 the one who is special, who is chosen, who is um, gonna do all the things right and climb to the top. Like that's how I started this season. This is what I'm not wearing right now. <laughs> so um, when I start, I wear a lot of uh, structured clothing um, that like hides my body. So it's sort of like I want to be angelic by wearing white, but also um, I'm also trying to hide that human side of me, which was I was like a weapon I was my, like a, my body is like a lethal weapon so just yeah. hiding like my body a little bit and then this harness was sort of about it looks really fucking cool when and then um <laughs> yeah it does but also like a, a symbol of like constriction mm -hmm. um control and uh clearly losing that shit now so uh, and as as episodes have gone along um the clothes are getting less structured I'm starting there's a little bit of color this past episode there was more color than you've seen mm -hmm. um and then uh just just developing that I'm not sure you know, in it, episode eight might be a, we might go backwards, but I'm not, I'm not sure where she's going right now. I got to make a decision sometimes between now and the next episode, <laughs> but uh, clothing wise, I have been trying to develop, uh, you know, the story there. Uh, I yeah. love that. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the prints, you know, obviously I'm going off of reference material as well. Um, let's see. What did I, so the one decision that I made for that is, you know, and the vignettes have already been seen. She's always got these like beautiful scarves on. And that one, it's like, it's not as constricted. It's not as closed off. And so this one, I want to have a very tight, like constricted, like uh, uh, look to the scarf as she is meeting these people because she is not letting them in. Mm. She is there to get stuff from them. And it's a one-way conversation. 
That was that was mainly. Yeah, yeah you know. but you know, did know this is for <laughs> very fancy. <laughs> <laughs> very subtle but very interesting choice. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for coming to the club. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Yes, and thank you for watching this episode seven. Uh, one more episode, season finale <laughs> of season two coming up. Ah, um, <laughs> tune in. It's going to be great. Um, thank you both. Now we dance. Thank you. you just, you just uh. dance. <laughs>